to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna come out of the closet like I can't no more. He came out. What? Who? Lil Nas X. Oh, precious. He came out during the Pride Parade. Oh, that's a nice thing, isn't I it? I love him. Nice way to start off the the week. Yes. That's pretty crazy. Why? That guy broke down every barrier there was, and then just keeps going. Where it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. First black guy to cross over into the country charts. Boom. With rap. Now you're gay. Like he's ticking all the boxes in right? this world. Country singer, gay country singer. You at should this probably point. think about running uh, on, the de- on the Democratic side. He'd probably Those win don't now. do anything. Those knobs. In the ah, team. they do and they don't. James. What do you need? Are you okay over there? Subscribe into the YouTube channel at home. Just know that I'm um, twisting and turning knobs. <laughs> Um, do you need help Just with like that? The, or the, you? the pride parade, you know, <laughs> twisting and turning some knobs after that. I think it goes to show that, like, we're good on that, right? Like, it's not going to affect his career in any no, way. None. When, I mean, I hope not. No. Where we're just kind of like, yeah, cool. People are over it. People like, yeah. are o- over being gay. We've, like we we've talked about this and... before where it's just like, all right, cool. It's such a normal part of society. It's like, eh, all right, great. You're not special anymore, you know? Yeah, I'd like to think that that's true everywhere i may be i feel like it is even even pride parade like i mean that's been going on for so long it's like all right sweet who gives a shit um i've never really thought about it maybe others do james i don't know i don't see color or gender here okay (laughs) i don't judge where you put your d at whether it's an m a b or a v don't care m mouth a b but V Vag. Sure. We keep it classy all the time e. on this show. Maybe it's because I'm so excited about this week. E. Well, what's the E for? That could be. Earth thing? Ear. Oh, God. You're N. Nose, nose yeah. obviously. Again, I'm just saying, e, like, we don't hole. care. Yeah. E H I hole. Right. Yeah, we don't care where you put your D at. Don't care. H. Don't care if you want to stuff a B in, too. Hand. You know? Yeah. Right. No, I think we got it. I think we, I think we got all the, right. all the bases covered. <laughs> James. G. Yep. Glory hole, yeah, right? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Gosh, this is fun. What's another one? No, we're all good on that. <laughs> I think we're pretty much all oh, good. I feel right. great. All right. I feel great. It's Do 4th you? of July. So we're like, we're getting down to the, the 4th of July week that I love. Yeah, since it's sort of in the week, we can kind of treat the whole week like 4th of July, right? That's what I feel like. I feel like that all the time. Start drinking now or? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I like to get Bradley Cooper, Star is Born Drunk, on 4th of July and on airplanes. And okay. congratulations. To yourself. I feel myself falling. You're doing a lot of singing. Uh, doing a lot of singing today, huh? I, I feel happy. Yeah. I feel real good. <laughs> I feel spry, James. I feel spry. Again, 4th of July week, nothing gets me off. Yeah. More than 4th of July week. I'm happy. Happy to see it. You've been disgruntled. No, I and haven't. And I'm happy to see salty. that you are back. I'm salty. Singing every other sentence. Te- I love it. Technology isn't there. Everybody's coming around <laughs> towards it, and uh, and I feel better. Are you getting about messages about I'm with you, bud? Oh, all the time. Mm-hmm. Every time, every day, I get a message of like, "Hey, man." I'm with you on technology's not there. Right. You guys even got, you and Dan, in two separate incidences this weekend, you both were like, fuck, man. Technology's not there. Uh, Did we? So on the last show, we talked about your, your gala you were going to. Oh, gala, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 you saved cats from. I was on the front line of the kitties, for yeah. the kitties. Yep. Front line for the kitties. Front line for the kitties. And you try to get a, an oobskis. What was it, 19 minutes? Oh, yeah. And then the so guy now- didn't know like the most basic address on the, the face of the planet. And I was like, what did I say to you? Eh, it's not technology. Not that one I will <laughs> give to Uber as a company has stopped paying their employees. 
the great rates that they used to. So now they're not <clears throat> making really anything. Uh, and so it's really just turned into, I mean, I've, I've taken the last three or four that I've taken have been like not great no. or taking a long time. You remember yeah. back in the day, and I don't know how anyone's really feeling about it, but back in the day you would press it and they'd show like the 10 cars around you waiting to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Confirm. And one of us is right by you. Racing to One get minute, you. two minute, three minute, like five minutes, and you're like, come on. This is taking forever. Yeah. The average now is about 15 to 20 minutes. <sighs> Not because any kind of surge, but it's they just don't have as many because they're not paying them as well because they weren't making money when they were really taking care of their ah. drivers. And I'm sure the investors, as you know, right, are like, okay, uh, your Uber, we're going to need to start seeing some money back sure. and not just being Uber. Um, so yeah, just shitty. You just see it like the cars are not as nice. The people aren't as nice. It's just anytime you don't pay, it's a perfect model. Like anytime you don't pay your employees and keep them happy, your company will fall. Yeah, I, I think the other portion of it is a lot of these drivers are using the Uber Eats where they can just drive to a place, pick up food, and then just drop it off and not have to deal with people too. Because mm -hmm. that, that's a big thing now too. Everybody's getting Uber Eats. And, and I wonder, because this guy was doing two other drop-offs uh -huh. before he came to me. I find it hard to believe that he had two people in his car right. that he needed to drop off. Sure, it was food. Maybe it was. So that's what took it so long is like he's actually, you can see him, he's actually going to two other people's places and yeah. i was like you're trying to tell me that's the fucking closest person to me yeah that's crazy uh the They're other just not around anymore the, the, the craziest thing about it for me was on friday nights uh coming back from the, the beach with the kids they just went to mcdonald's just right. wanted a you know a happy meal right no one was in there uh there was only three cars in line but not one single person was in, inside right it's friday night most people, everybody's with their family or whatever. Sure. You're not really picking a McDonald's on a Friday night unless you're single. Right. Let's face it, or a loser. Sure. Um, but for me, or awesome. it was like yeah. 8, 8.15. Um, and, and there's a reason why I'm saying this exact time. On a Friday night at 8, 8.15, McDonald's should be empty. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody else who was eating McDonald's at that point probably had it at like maybe 5 to 7 tops sure so it's it's a big family night families get together and eat together and, and again we're and not out. scientists but yeah, i've played one in a movie so i feel pretty confident <laughs> but i'm sure this is all pretty coming out of my mouth so uh, there's three cars in the in the drive-thru with mm -hmm, us right mm -hmm. we all order all i ordered was a happy meal for from a child and that was it right they were like sir can you pull over and then the other two cars that were in line with me they had us pull into parking spaces as well the parking spaces were numbered at this McDonald's and on the sign, it said, this is where you pick up your Uber Eats. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? You don't pick up Uber Eats though. Uber Eats comes to you. Right. But this is where they were putting all the cars. Oh, so they started treating Eats? us because I'm like, finally, after like five minutes, I look over and there's another dude next to me and he's texting. And I was like, uh -huh. yo, man, what'd you, what'd you order? Just out of curiosity. And he was like, man, I just got a McChicken sandwich. And I was like, man, I just got a Happy Meal. And I'm like, why are we waiting five, ten minutes for food? And it's, it's only the three of us. And there was, there was one other car next to us. And I was like, and there was a single person in there. I have a feeling all of their kitchen was stacked trying to get orders ready for Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. That the rest of us, I mean, I, I felt like it was an empty station, like a robot station. Where I was like, man, there's not a human inside. The rest of us are waiting for our food, not in a drive-thru anymore, but in the spaces for Uber Eats. Somehow this McDonald's is out of food altogether. Who are they making food for at this level? And again, none of it was specialty orders or anything. Right. So I think part of it with restaurants and with grocery stores is the same thing. Um, when you see people shopping, Half the time, people in the grocery store right now are shopping for other people. So, oh yeah, and that's what that's makes a weird it, like, thing and to they me have too. These, it's like, just like huge, gigantic carts. It's just sad. Weird. It's sad. 
So I do. We ended up waiting a ten like ten minutes at McDonald's for a, a happy meal, and I was like, "Yo, man, what? What is going on? Ten minutes? Now, now do I have to Uber Eats and everything? Oh, to my house? Well, you know, Uber Eats with McDonald's is like thirty dollars. Oh, you get to pay a surcharge. Or yeah. Ah. Uh, a friend of ours in the neighborhood does it all the time. And I always make fun of him. I'm just like, ooh, you're rich. Yeah, yeah. 30, He's like, no, I'm just, I'm, not, I'm just like, don't want to leave. And I'm like, $30 for a couple sandwiches from McDonald's. You're fucking rich, dude. Yeah. I don't know what, I mean, I'm you sorry you're uncomfortable. Do you know how hard it is to bring up $30 at McDonald's? Oh, yes. Especially <laughs> if you're getting like Big Mac, like, the, uh, I mean, n- anything. Good luck. You could feed your entire neighborhood for that. Right? We tried it at Taco Bell once. I think we ended up getting like fucking close to like 60 tacos or something crazy, man. It's, it's impossible to spend, to spend 30? 30 bucks. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's kind of like, really? Yeah. Really? Look, that's next level. Ooh, that's you're, when you're rich. you in a gold toilet afterwards. You rich? Yeah. That's when you're wiping your ass with uh, actual pages of the United States Constitution because you sure. own it at that sure. point. Sure. That's a, that's a nice level of rich that I'd, I'd like to get into. Mitch's McDonald's to your house. How fast is it? Because the French fries always get, get cold to me. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not rich enough to Uber Eats McDonald's. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it on the 4th, drunk on the 4th. There's just no way I'm going anywhere. Have come in here yeah. and talk to us about it. <laughs> just have them on the show? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guy, come on in. Yeah, I can't wait to see my Uber East driver on the 4th and night of the 4th. Hey, hey. again, very Bradley Come Cooper style. Come on in. Tell me something, girl. Singing. We're singing again. Yeah, just yeah, let them know. Yeah, we're just going to keep hey, on uh, singing. I got a uh, bursitis in my ear. I right. can't, uh, <laughs> can't hear you so well. I'm going to have to turn my head. Uh, just stumbling drunk off of deep eddies. And spin drift, a little, little splash of strike force in there to keep it going. Do we talk about the movie that we saw or no? Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's give it a gozies. We, we promised the audience, so we're, we're, we're going to chat about it. Right. Ma- it makes me sad. Uh, you tell them what it is. I'm going to look up the box office numbers for it, the finals. I so got the, we saw yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure, I hope that Preface you guys have Preface it by saying the movie yesterday. The, we saw the go. movie yesterday. There you go. I love being talked to like that. It's my favorite fucking thing. For the audience, Jabe. So, and it makes it seem like you guys are dumb too. So like that kind of feeling. So <laughs> we saw the movie yesterday. Uh, and what, what did we see it? <laughs> there it is. Nailed it. Boom. Um, it's about this guy that gets into an accident, whatever. He wakes up and nobody knows who the Beatles are. He's and a musician, he's a struggling musician. Struggling musician. Yep. Is ready to quit, has a girl manager that's just believes in him the whole time, but is in the friend zone, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Gets into an accident, wakes up, nobody knows who the Beatles are or Coca-Cola or Oasis. Again, really missing on those really factors. Really weird. But anyway, so he t- takes the catalog, remembers all these songs, uh-huh. makes them his own, and, you know, it shows his rise. He's about to... Yep. Release the album, yeah. whatever. So, you know, see it or don't see it. That's what it is. Well, I'm not going to give away the ending, which people are either, either love or hate is what I've heard, where it's either too cheesy or whatever. I don't know. Or you love it. So the, the debate on this show for a long time is the box office has been down this year. Right. Uh, Disney is the only thing that is just crushing life with the Avengers, Toy Story 4. Uh, Aladdin, they've got Lion King coming out, like everybody. I think that'll break every record there is. Right. Lion King uh, with Beyonce and Donald Glover. That's going to smash. Oh, yeah. And James Earl Jones is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The question was, can an original movie survive in today's society? Uh, It made 17 million, which... It's not good. It's not not the best. Um, I mean, the, the budget was 26 of it. I didn't, enjoy, I didn't enjoy the film. Right. I thought the story, they could have done a lot with it. When you are the, the, the movie that is supposed to be the breakout of the summer, because a lot of people said that this was going mm-hmm. to, to be it, and then it was really clever and all that stuff. Like, 
if you miss like that, then it's going to have repercussions for all the other original movies after that. And it's, I'm going to be totally realsies with you after this. I don't really know how you recover and try just not making original movies on Netflix. Right. I loved it though. You did. So I'm sure there has to be other people who did, but, um, I'm glad that people, at least some people went to see it, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't really know how to. Oh, well, here, here's my thoughts with $26 million. You can't show a lot of crowd scenes with that type of money. Um, you can either CGI them mm-hmm. or whatever. Like the, the, the biggest, I guess the biggest financial cost in a movie like this is extras. Mm. Cause you've got to feed them, clothe it them. It didn't look like they CGI'd, but. How's, I, but I only saw one big concert scene on the beach. Right. So. And when at the end. Uh, yeah. But for a, a movie where you have a gigantic singer singing around the world doing concerts, like at least with the star is born, I felt like, man, you're there. I mean, even though I knew it was Coachella and shit like right. that, like you got on stage, all this shit. And it was, it seemed big and full of, you know? Right. I did. I mean, he's really singing the Beatles songs really just, you, you are reminded of how amazing they are. Yeah. Actually, when they're so pared down and sung by just one guy, he does have a great voice and a piano or a guitar and not like a bigger a full band. Um, and it was a like romantic comedy. So be ready for that and go in with that mindset and you may like it. I mean, I did. I don't know. You did. I, some, I, I did not. And for some reason, whatever I'm going through or whatever, it was exactly, it spoke to whatever I was going through, which a lot no, of. No, and look, that, that's the point of movies. Right. I'm looking at it from the financial perspective of like, all right, cool. I didn't like the movie. Who gives a shit? Like, I'm, I'm only one dude. People don't like this show. Um, who cares? Right. right. I, from the financial perspective, 17 isn't going to do it. Right. No. So no. I don't know kind of where you, where you go or what's, what's coming up next that's, uh, that's going to really fix this. Because uh, even like there's a movie that I think is going to do really well, which is that Rock and Jason Statham movie. Hobbs and grab ass and, you know, dick grabs and fucking hot, hot wheels. Okay. Whatever it's called. It's a spinoff of Fast and the Furious. And it's like, all right, you're oh, still right, right, going right. along with those characters from. Mm, that's not the same. No, it's so, not. And then you have The Lion King, which is rad, but we've already had that. I think if this movie was released on Netflix, it would have crushed. Same. And that's the so, sad part. When I know I it's saw the it. sad part because when I told people that I loved it, like, whatever, when I talked to people that I saw it, um, I was like, I wouldn't see it in the theater. And I hate to say that, but I, I would see it. Like, yeah, I would te- completely recommend it to people, but not, I wouldn't necessarily have them spend their money on in a theater, which is horrible to say. Yeah. So you're, you're kind of down to one original movie left over the summer. I feel like that can maybe save this and that's Tarantino's. Right. So we'll and see, I mean, and that's on. at the end of July. I'm yeah. all in on that opening nights, whatever, midnight oh, yes. screening. I don't care what I have to do. Like, I'm all in on that. So sure. uh, we'll see if, if he's able to break this slump or streak or whatever you want to call it, then, all right, cool. There's still some, still some hope. If he doesn't, I'm not sure what happens. Then it's, then it's you have your answer, I feel. If yeah. Tarantino can't do it, this movie can't do it. And they've been teasing it for a long, long time. And their press right now is like That's everywhere. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I see a thing on Instagram like constantly for it. So if this does not work, I think you have your answer. That that's yes, it. Correct. That's it. And everybody's moved on to Moved on to from Netflix. making original stuff. Either Netflix, they'll do original stuff or. Well, no, you, no, look. So in the do... fall, you have the Scorsese movie with De Niro and Pacino and that's Netflix. Right. So if Scorsese's moving on. Right. We'll see. Tarantino's the one left. And I wonder if he sat back and looked at the numbers and said, look, I'm only doing 10 movies for a reason. Because he saw the whole thing happening. Yep. And I think and he if saw it happening with The to, Hateful Eight, where yeah. it was just like, all right, he fought 
tooth and nail with those motherfuckers to get it released on 70 millimeter. And uh, they were like, look, we'll give you X amount of theaters to do this in or whatever. And he's just like, where are we at with this, guys? What are we right. doing? So we'll see. But either way, he's going to have my money opening night. And uh, look, we gave it to yesterday on opening night. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we got we get some sponsors, James, who pay for this this fucking show. You believe it? I don't. I, you don't believe I it. I still don't believe it. Uh, a lot of people are asking about the prickly heats. Oh, Woo-hoo. what were they asking? How it was on the old danglers. Oh, okay. Everybody was like, yo, that show is crazy. I think it pretty much showed how it was. Yeah, I so, do too. Yeah. I do too. I think it pretty much demonstrated But I'm going to be honest, how it was. I can get used to it. Something I can get used to and get sure. behind. So sure, um, I feel pretty. So you're positive. using that? Are you replacing your your GB? No, but it's here. Like I'm not going to get a bottle of GB for the office. You sure. Know, for the new set, uh, for the new sound stage. Like I'll I'll throw you know if I'm having a hot day in here I'll throw a little snake brand on there, a little prickly heat on the old danglers. <laughs> and if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can see this finely crafted. Tin. Again, I love the packaging. Packaging is great. So and uh, really Rick nice. Abend gave that to us. He did. He did. And we're also going to put it. When are we putting a picture in there? Everybody keeps asking that. Well, I have a couple things. I mean, do we put our picture? Do we have people send in stuff? No. I want to go. I want to go with Smoking Affleck in there. Like, I, I, like uh, the one that he's we'll uh, from the holidays. Yeah, it's right behind you. But... No, no, no. There's oh, that the one, one. But that, I want to go with the oh, one from the holidays. Okay, another one. Okay. With the blue sweater. Uh, but submit it and then we'll, we'll take it cause we're going to, f- we're going to fill up this thing soon. What are they submitting? Uh, what they want in the picture. So oh, a okay, bunch of people okay. already have. Okay. And, uh, I want to, I want to get a, a, like a, a good answer on this. Mine, my vote is for smoking Affleck. Okay. Um, mine is like an old timey sepia of us. Of you and I? Yeah. Like okay. going to one of those. All right. Booths. God, there was Violin one. with a fiddle. Okay. There was one, there's one picture I'd love to put in there, but I don't know if this person's real. If the person's real? Yeah. Uh, when I took my dad to the Masters for his 65th birthday, we were staying at this Airbnb, mm-hmm. um, which was like somebody's house in right. a residential neighborhood. And there was a bunch of like sepia old-timey pictures on the wall. And there was one of this woman. And I don't know if she was doing a bit or a character. Or if she was like that in real life, but she had like uh, one of those headgears on for you know like a retainer you would oh, sleep for braces. In. Yep. Yeah, and then this neck brace, uh, and so she was she was up and out. If you're watching it, she was up and out, just like this, just like. Oh my god! And I'm like, I laughed so hard, and it was just me and my nope, dad. And those knobs like, don't do anything. I was yet. like, hey. Uh, this knobby? Yep. This little knobby? Mm-hmm. Um, I asked my dad, I was like, I'm taking a picture of it, my, and I'm like, is this real or fake? And he goes, I don't know. And, and I, I was. Gosh, af- and that is amazing. To I have was somebody afraid to post it because if it, it was real, real yeah, yeah, and then yeah. somebody wrote in and said, hey, fuck you, right. dude. Right. Because um, that happened with me and you. I don't know if you know this. I, I took a picture of you at a Cubs game when we were at a bar across the street getting ready to go. We yeah. We pre-gaming for a Cubs game, right? Okay. It was a fat man in the back, maybe 330, 345. Sure. And he had stopped and was just staring at your ass, right? Sure. And it's in the picture. I don't blame him. I don't either. Got a great ass. And uh, Well, I just have a, a ass, you know? No, nah, you got a real great ass. Jabes, don't be uh, don't be too shy about your anyways. Your uh, your backside. And then what happened? You peach, you peach. And then what happened, baby? Stop. Uh, no, I'm not stopping. <laughs> I'll talk about my brethren, my plums, and my peach, baby. So I posted and said, "Hey, man, this is how hot my wife is. That it'll make a fat man stop in his tracks to take a look at dad ass, mm-hmm. right? D A T. Sure." Because I felt gangster that day. Right. The picture blew up on my Instagram and somebody was like, I'm that fat man. Fuck you, dude. And I was just like, oh, no, dude. That's horrible. I know. And I feel like a dickhead. Therefore, when I saw the picture of this lady and I took a picture of it at their house. Yeah, because it was like that. It was like the face that you just made. And I was like, oh, shit. 
What if this is a real person not doing a bit? I post it. They find out and tag each other, and then we're fucked. Like, I just made fun yeah, of yeah, a yeah, person yeah, who yeah, may yeah, or may yeah. not be physically and or mentally retarded. Got it. I didn't want to do that. I don't right. want to be that guy either. Smart. Um, lastly, real quick before we jump into sponsors, because this is a breaking news story. The, the fucking guy with the meth squirrel got arrested. I know. And we were this close to getting him on the show. He left a, what, a three second, four second voicemail. And I was just like. It's probably ah. when he was uh, being chased. By the Probably. Police. Yeah. I want, and he's like, I, I'm going in. Uh. I want to let him know. His name is Mickey J. Polk. I want to let you let him know out there. Mickey, I didn't fucking rat you out, dude. I'm not a snitch. Um, I don't know how the fucking cops got you. It wasn't this guy right here. I would never do that to you. I respect not only what you're doing for your own community, what you've done for the squirrel community, and, uh, and then other meth addicts who have been accused of giving meth to other things, squirrels and or other animals. Um, I want to say that I did not rat you out, Mickey. Yeah. And when you do get out. If. Hit us up. Up. Fast. Fast. You and D's nuts. Yeah. We'll have you on. Yeah. And that's the squirrel's name for anybody Obviously, who wasn't. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Uh, privy to the squirrel's name. It's D's nuts is what he named the squirrel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if they took the squirrel into custody or not. I don't know where the, squ- the squirrel is at this moment. Yeah, I really don't know. And they couldn't, um, there was no, like they said, there was no way to test the, the squirrel for meth. So it's still unknown. Well, and that may be how he gets off, you yeah. know? So uh, just know that he we're thinking about you. did run from the police, though. Yeah, well, I mean, look. Because he knew he was innocent, that's yeah, why. Yeah, he was accused, wrongly accused, and... Uh, I felt like Mickey got a bad rap. Yep. So when he gets out, if he gets out, we're obviously now friends on Facebook. Free Mickey, yeah. Yeah, hashtag free Mickey. And um, we're going to get him on the show. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any experience with, with holding a live squirrel. Uh, Jesse does. So mm-hmm. maybe if he gets that squirrel back, you can hold the squirrel. He can come on the show. I'll take care of it, yeah. And we'll figure shit out together. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, just know that we're all in this together. And uh, we'll probably be planning a march of some sort. Um, down to our, our local park. Yep. And uh, uh, we're going to get our free, free Mickey, Mickey signs yep. out. Yep. 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 We will do it. Uh, so we're in it. Well, we're praying for you, Mickey. Hands up. You know, pause up for Mickey. <laughs> Squirrel pause up for Mickey. Uh, sponsors. <laughs> Look, I hope his jail's got a ghost bed in it from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If it doesn't, he needs it. Mickey needs his sleep. He's got a lot of interviews to do when he gets out. Oh, yeah. It's a wanted. Yeah. Um, reminds me of those just, just uh, those old activists, you know, from the 70s. What does? Peter Fonda. It reminds me of a young Peter Fonda, Mickey. Mickey does. Yeah. 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 Just doing stuff. A young Jane Fonda, maybe. Reminds me of all the Fondas, really. <laughs> Um, he's very fun to like. Yeah, very fun to like. Anyways, ghost uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. It's where you're going to get the best 4th of July deals, 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 deals. Uh, if you get that protective cover, which they're giving away for free right now with the bed, I'm willing to wager you could just sit in that thing and, and light off Roman candles right off, let them bounce right off the mattress. Oh, yeah, nothing would happen. Gonna, no, no, happen, no. Right? Yeah. No. Fire retardant. Yep. Is that right? No, it doesn't sound like it. It kind of sounds like when you say uh, the word Mexican. You know, it's like, man, it sounds derogatory, but it's not. retardant. It's just what it's called. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, it's definitely, you. if you spill your drink on it, you'll be fine. Spill your drink on it. That's all I know. May or may not be fire retardant. Mm Mm-hmm. Gosh, yeah. That sounds weird. That it's not really, can't be right. Man, but yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Bouncing yeah. off another earlobe mm-hmm. there is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, also, on, on 4th of July, if you're into role play, now's the chance to get one of these mattresses. Maybe dress up your loved one like Ben Franklin and give him a ride. Right. All those freedom fighters, you know? Young TJ, a little Thomas Jefferson up in there. Adams, a little JQA. A little JQA up in that bedroom. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash Stringer Bros is also giving away 
15% off to every military and first responder out there in the world. Go to the bottom of the page, do it. And their 4th of July deals are fucking disgusting. It's crazy, dude. Go there right now. 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. No one's doing that on the planet, but they're doing it at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Forward slash drinking bros. A lot of singing today, James. Lots of singing. A lot of singing today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Shabloinkers. Ooh. Hey-o. Boom, 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 shabloinkers. Uh, Strike Force Energy is in, look, everything. I actually poured it in here, so forgive me. I'm not drinking H-Factor right now. Okay. I, I poured some in here. I need a little uh, yeah. get them up juice, you know? Yeah, because these H-Factors are designed to not, nothing goes in. Yeah, you don't, you don't want sque- to try to squeeze anything in. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I put a little uh, uh, Strike Force in this drink today. I got I to gotta get it up today, James. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? You've been singing all all show. Yeah, but I feel like and... I, I feel like I got to get it up, you know. Um, and is that just strike force help? Yeah. With that, oh, yeah, oh, it does. Oh, 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 Helps oh. out with everything, boners, oh, oh, oh. Uh, energy, all of it. Wow. Yeah, just rub a little in. Wow. See what goes down for you. Wow. Put a little grape on that ding dong. See what happens. Four amazing flavors: grape, lemon, orange, and a ridge. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottles. No carbs and no sugars. That's what everybody really loves this shit for, too. Boom, you can pop it in your 4th of July drink and get crunk. For your. What? Jabe's. It's fire retardant. Crunk. <laughs> crunk? Yeah. Mm-mm. Nope. Crank. Word is retired. Good. Uh, so is flame retardant. Let's not use that <laughs> word anymore. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Last but not least, this is what the people came for, Jabes. This is how we do it. Oh, God. <laughs> that one's retired as well. <laughs> Talking about straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> You right? Oh man, (laughs) just hangs on that one word and drags it. Nothing makes me laugh more than songs that I used to like. Yeah, that now are uncomfortable. Uncomfortable for me to listen to only because I used to like them, right? Yeah, yeah. Or they were just so normal. Yeah, and now. Yeah, nothing will make me laugh harder. <laughs> this is how we do There's one. So I get a call from a very... F- wait, uh, well, I'm going to word this carefully. I get well, a call yeah. from a very famous musician. What was that, Saturday night? Yeah. And it was like, hey, man, I'd love to be on the show, whatever, right? Um, we should tell this after the Straight Razors. Well, we'll tell it before. Okay. Um, they love it when we just chat about Straight right, Razors. Right, and all not the way talk through, about their not actual product. Their products for men. They love it. Um. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do, the, we'll do this first. Uh, straightrazors.com. Everything you need in this life to be a real man in this world. And we've got them now in front of you. Yes. So that is the Smolder. Just yep. such a cool uh, packaging. The best. Look at the Straight Razor. Old school. Beard oil. Mustache wax. The cologne's fucking amazing. Uh, the Smolder aftershave is the best in the biz. Love all the products at straightrazors.com. If you're worried about using a straight razor, they got safety razors. That's how I keep so baby fresh and smooth. Baby fresh and baby smooth. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. The big savings there. You can shave that gooch up before the fourth too, you know? Yeah. Shave that gerbil catwalk. Yeah, because you're going to be putting a lot of, you like to do this Liquids. thing where you like, no, you like hold the uh, firework yep. in there. Yep. Um, Rectally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, are you holding it with your legs um, up against your taint, or called, is it? It's called a taint Roman. Or so is I'll it? Go a taint, I'll go a taint Roman candle, and I'll go. Uh, I'll go some gerbil, gerbil catwalk, black cats. Okay. Uh, I like to light off some black cats those back are, there. And let those dance around those my are the little ones. Yeah. Well, I don't have that much those taint are the area. Small ones. Yeah, I've got a very small <laughs> taint area. If I was selling it online on like Truly or something. Are they like this? It would be a. That's, and you have that yeah, little. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> hanging it's a, out? It's maybe a, a, a mm-hmm. two inch by two inch square. Mm-hmm. Square two inch by two inch. And those uh, don't area. shoot out either. Those oh. will just go off. Yep. 
um, right where they are. Yeah, the land's right where they lay. You're going to play <laughs> that lie as it lays. Um, anyway, what else do we got? So I get a call from that, like a super famous musician. Sure. On Saturday night. And he's like, hey, I'd love to be on the show or whatever, right? And I'm like, I, I, I had had a few at this point. Because we'd gone out and gotten some sake or... Um, I think that was my gala night. Oh, that's right. It was Friday night. You're right. You're right. Right. So you were so with I the put, kids. Put, so you were wasted. No, I put, I put the kids to bed and I was up, I was up late and uh, I was like, wait, wait, who? And I, it's one of those bands that was famous, what, what would you say, 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ten, 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was like, man, I know they have a million hit songs. And sure enough, I looked all of them up and their songs exactly like you, you were talking about where you're like. I knew I sang those at some oh, point in my life. Oh, and now, like you hear it. <laughs> you're just super like. fucking cringy. And I was just like, oh man. So I was conflicted of like, do we do this interview? And then how do I not laugh at, at the music? It's not laughing at the music because it is so, I mean, at a time in your life. Yeah. And it is still good. I think people are still super into it. So it's not laughing. It's almost just like, oh, God, you think about yourself. <laughs> you think about yourself at that time, too. So there's all kinds of cringy yeah. things that Ugh. happen. Technically, a great band and obviously super talented to still be. They have a million hits. Million all hits. All of them you know. And uh, it's just one of those bands that, that like, I, I hate to use the N-word. I really do. But I'm going to put them in the Nickelback category. Mm. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's, the, if it's like that. It's not Nickelback ca category. It's like... They're above Nickelback, but they're that famous where you know, you're like, holy shit. I know all of your shit. It's like Stained. They're no. Stained. They're way bigger than Stained. But it's... They're in that... Stained only had one song. These guys had a million fucking songs. They're in that songs. category to me. I don't know. It, it, it's a tough one. Kind of... <sighs> Who was, who was Rob Thomas? What was his whole... Was, remember that band? MB2O? What's that? Matchbox 20? Yeah. Is that Rob who, Thomas? Who calls them MB2O? Real uh, fans, which I am. <laughs> what? So, MB2O, yeah. I've never heard MB2O And then is that life. Rob Thomas? Like, yeah, I'm obviously a... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Where did you pull out MB2O from? from no one's my... like, oh, yeah. Oh, Rob Thomas, that's MB2O. Oh, is it? <laughs> well, fuck my whole ding -a -ling. I did. I did not know you were such a, an astute fan of, of their work. MB2O, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So I would put them in that category, would you not? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Where you're like, they're good songs. But you you still cringe. So I don't at wanna, yourself. I, I didn't want to pass on the interview. Sure. Because of there might be something cool in him who says, "Hey man, I realize like some of this music is super fucking cringy now." Yeah. I don't know. I don't. You never know the answer to that, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a tough one. Where it's I'm like, cool. Gonna... Are you making fun of yourself, or would you be willing to? But yeah, what did way, he sound like? Yeah. What he, did he sound like? That he would be, that, what do you think? He's moved on to a new genre of music, so. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's some people you talk to that are super famous, and they're either in it and they're cool, just right off the bat, like Gunnar Peterson was one of those. He was on Drinking Bros podcast last week, like, that motherfucker was cool as shit. Yeah. Because like, sometimes we'll shoot the shit before the show starts. Dude, I chatted with him, rapped with him for like 40 minutes one day. And I was just like, dude, we'd be bros in real life, right? Yeah, you were definitely in love with him for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah He's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. real cool. Yeah. Whereas this other one, I, it, it was late. My, you know, my child was sleeping next to me or whatever. I was kind of whispering because I didn't want to wake him up. You're and I was what? Like, I was like, wait. You're who? It was, it was a phone call you're not expecting to get on a Friday night sure. at like 1030. I can promise you that. Sure. And you're just like, oh, man. So they were like, yeah, are you, are you cool to do the show? And I was like, yeah. Let me give you a jangle back when I get into the office, and then we'll figure this out from there. But uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. All right. Because you want so badly to be like, dude, that, that song, like, ugh. 
oh, uh, like, what do you Makes think about it so now? Hard. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, know. Yeah. I cringe. And I like, heard, oh, geez. Ironically, I heard uh, Nickelback last night on the radio. Okay. Um, phone was dead. Usually I'm a, a, like an Apple Music guy now. I've pretty much given up on, like, Sirius XM is gone for me. Right. Um, AM, FM, I'm, I'm tired of the commercials and shit. So it's just like, ah. I just pop on Apple Music. Phone was dead, so it was charging. So I had to go back to old school radio stations. Like oh, your local. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's been a while. It's been a minute, surprisingly. Sure. Since Apple Music has taken over my whole ear holes. Right. And Nickelback came on, and uh, like I, I kind of saw my, my child just kind of nobbing, you know, mm-hmm. nobbing to the thing. And I was like, man, I know this song. Why do I know? And it just didn't click in until the chorus, look at this phone. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh. Boy. Oh, boy. I will say this. It is not as cringeworthy as, as we've made fun of it. Whereas like Rick Astley, when you get Rick rolled, like that song, never gonna give you up, never, never gonna, gonna let you up. Like that's super cringy. Is that cringy? Yeah. I think that's, that's an era that goes full circle where you can just like be into it. I guess, man. I, ca- I can't be, but whatever. She says, baby. It's 3 a.m. and I think I'm lonely. What's that? MB20? MB20. Yeah, MB20. Oh, sorry. MB20. Yes, yeah, yeah. you should be sorry. Yeah. Uh, next Every, time. You guys all know. Uh, Rob Thomas. Where are my MB20ers at? Next time he comes into town, I'll get you ticks. So we'll ticks. get you some MB, okay. MB20 ticks. I would love to. Is it still him and Santana? Are they still riding that wave? No. 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 It's been about 20 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't Are they think putting so. out new music? Uh, MB2O? Yeah. Doesn't look like new music, but they are touring. So Really? Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll get you ticks. You know, we'll set it up for you. Who are the other ones? Goo Goo Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, hey, that. Yeah, yeah. now that, oh, what? Now you could get down with some Goo Goo? No, I can't either. Like, I can't oh, get okay. down with that, any of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, nor would I want to see them in, in concert. So speaking of all of this, yeah. what about this Swifty thing? Ah, that was a big story over the weekend. Um, fuck, this is a crazy one. So Taylor Swift has always been known for how independent she is, you know? Right. Independent label, I don't answer to major labels, blah, 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 blah. Right. I put my music where I went, I put my music, and she was what? Did, she didn't do Spot, was it Spotify? Uh, I think she boycotted one of them. Yeah. And she said, my music's exclusive here and blah, 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 blah. Problem is her independent record label got purchased yes. by Scooter well, she Braun. Left, she left them right. for Universal because yep. she wanted to have more control over her music moving forward. The problem with that is she left all of her rights yep. back in this other label. Um. And Which there's nothing you can do. And if no. I'm that independent label and she walks and goes to Universal, I say, fuck you anyways, and I'm keeping these things. And So the deal that they had was if she stayed, they were like, if you stay, every new song you make will give you back an old master, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that sounds like an okay deal, I guess. I, d- I don't really know. I mean. Yeah. Um, and anyways, so she left, went to Universal, Scooter Braun, Mm -hmm. Ariana Grande, and Bieber's famous uh, manager? Yes, Scooter Braun is one of the biggest in the biz. So he's got uh, Justin Bieber. He's also got uh, Ariana Grande. That's what I just said. Who else, though? Um, he's got, he's got quite, anyway, a f- quite a few people. I think he's made his, his name off a couple people. Yeah. And, and then just kind of rode the r- wave of like Bieber and Grande. Like, that's all you need, basically. Kind of. And, and that's kind of the gig, right? You try to pick up as many talented people as you can. That's what a manager does. Same with acting, right? right? You, go, you go look at a, a manager's roster for acting. There'll be 50 clients, maybe only five or six are famous. That's who's really bringing it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're hoping the other people other, will blow yeah, up yeah, yeah. And, and whatever. Uh, she's saying, you know, that uh, she was sad and grossed out. And uh, this is the worst case scenario for what happened. Um, Ooh, Kanye, Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Ka- like, um, it's everybody, dude. Yeah, but 
here's here's the thing I want to say about this is a uh, little Swifty. Nothing happens to little Swifty. She has complete control over all these things, and that was apparent when her and Kanye had the little agreement about what was going to happen with their feud. Correct. Um, so she was notified before this sale went down. She was also told if you want to match his, his price by $1, mm-hmm. we'll give it to you. Right. So she was, she was given all these things, and then he, so Scooter Braun bought, I think it was $300 million, right? Bought her whole catalog and the company. Right. For $300 million. Million dollars, yes, which is... Do you think Swifty has that? A lot of bread. I think she does. I think, I think Swifty does have it, and this is one of those cases to me where uh, Paul McCartney... Had he could have bought in the Beatles catalog back in the eighties, and Michael Jackson ended up buying it, and then that ended their friendship and right. whatever. It took him like fucking twenty four years or something, but he got finally got the rights back, right? Because um, Michael Jackson needed cash and started selling off the shit. Paul McCartney was finally able to get back the masters for the Beatles and all this other stuff. I'm gonna read this quote here from for Taylor Swift because I, to me, this I think is, it's pretty telling. But go ahead. I do too. For years, I asked, pleaded for a chance uh, to own my own work. Instead, I was given an opportunity to sign back up with Big Machine Records, which is the independent label that sold to Scooter Braun for $300 million, and earn one album back at a time, one for every new one I turned in. I walked away because I knew once I signed that contract, Scott Borchetta, who's obviously the president of that label, would sell it, therefore selling me and my future. I had to make the excruciating choice to leave behind my past. Music I wrote on my bedroom floor and videos I dreamt up and paid for from the money I earned playing in bars, clubs, and arenas, and then stadiums. Some fun facts about today's news. I learned that Scooter Braun's purchase of my master's uh, as it was announced to the entire world. That's coming the first time she heard it. It wasn't. I highly doubt that. No, it was actually reported that she was told about this before it happened Months and prior. given a chance to buy it if she wanted to but go ahead yeah uh, all i could think about was the incessant manipulative manipulative bullying i received at his hands for years like when kim kardashian orchestrated an illegally recorded snippet of a phone call to be leaked and then scooter got his two clients together to bully me online about it or when his client Kanye West organized a revenge porn music video which strips away my naked body, now Scooter has stripped me of my life's work that I wasn't given an opportunity to buy. Essentially, my musical legacy is about to lie in the hands of someone who tried to dismantle it. This is my worst case scenario. There's, there's so much to unpack with this. First of all, the Kanye thing, he, call, he called you. He fucking called you and told you that line was going in the song. And the reason why were... Kim Kardashian released it is because you fucking lied to the whole world and said that this didn't happen. And you were so shocked and appalled. And then you disappeared for two years. Mm-hmm. Didn't make any music. Didn't go on social media. Didn't do anything about it because you got caught. You've always said you've hated her because she's a little fake she's ass. A sto- well, she's a stone cold businesswoman, bitch, boss, bitch, yeah. whatever. And, uh, I don't think, I just don't like the whole like, hey guys, hey, hey, right. hey, and being behind the scenes, someone that is fucking cutthroat and really has complete control and orchestrates all of this stuff and turns it into albums. So even this, at the end of this statement, talks about, if you want to go listen to my old shit, up to you, Based, I'm paraphrasing, if you want to go listen to my old shit, that's fine, and a healthier option may be buying my new album that comes out August 13th, whatever it sure. fucking is. And so it's all, I never for one second feel like anything is happening to her. I always, I think she's big enough and cutthroat enough to be orchestrating everything that is happening. And she reminds me of someone that we worked with recently that is just, you know. Yeah. Just uh, crazy and, and, and manipulative is what is the word that I would use for her as far as manipulating the internet and her fans and her whole image and everything. So, yeah, no. <sighs> I don't like her. Two more things about this. She has it. She has the 300 million. And let's say she was short a little bit, right? 
or her whole net worth was 300 million. She wouldn't have spent it all on this catalog. She could have walked into any bank and gotten the loan for her back catalog because she's Taylor fucking Swift and that brings in millions and millions of dollars a year. You're able to take that money and get a business loan for something like that to buy back your catalog. If you really wanted it for 300 million, you could have done it. You could have matched Scooter Braun's offer and got it. I'm sure the label would have been cool with that. Right. Hey man, thanks for playing. This is awesome. We're getting out of the business. Take your 300 million and go home. Right. She could have done that. So that's mm -hmm. a fucking lie. Right. I didn't get the opportunity to buy back my own music. For that number, you could have. Uh, the Kim Kardashian thing is a fucking lie. She got caught in that. Mm -hmm. um, so to bring all of these people into it with Kanye and whatever, the only thing I, I, I will give her out of this was when Kanye stormed the stage and said, you know. But all she saw when he was coming up the stage was dollar signs. I believe that. I truly believe that. I don't know because she was super young, but mm. uh, either I don't way. Think, I don't think you should put anything past her. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, personally how I feel about it. Now, her. personally, I've dealt with Scooter Braun. And I've dealt with Scooter Braun when he was super fucking famous. Um, when he had Kanye and Bieber and all those guys at their heights for uh, 50K and a Call Girl Love Story, mm -hmm. um, which is the movie I met you on. Mm -hmm. We had one of his clients in it, uh, a guy named Asher Roth, mm -hmm. uh, who, who sings I Love College. Uh, great dude, great rapper, right. great everything. How was your interaction with him? Great. Scooter was amazing, got right back to me. But we were doing a small, tiny, independent film. Um, I was paying his client well, um, but it was the quote that Scooter gave me. I paid that and was happy to interact with travel and everything, and he did it himself. It wasn't through an assistant or anybody else. And I would say at that time, that was his least famous client by a mile. Right. And he did all of it personally, took care of it personally, travel, hotel, anything. Gave me his cell phone, email, all of that shit across the board. I did not have one problem with Scooter Braun. And let's face it, Asher Roth is not the most famous client on that roster. No, and his he cut could of have that been. is peanuts compared to the cut of a, a Kanye or a, or a Justin Bieber right. at that time. Because that was in... When did we shoot that? 2011? Yeah. I mean, you're in full Bieber mode at that point. Right, where he could just be like, Ash, take care of this. Kanye I need to fuck still, in. Yeah, 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 man. I'm hey, man. on tour with Biebs. This like, was a small deal, and you're mm -hmm. like, all right, cool, didn't, man. And was there every, every step along the way? So much so, in fact, when I work with somebody that is that helpful, I usually send them something afterwards, like a gift basket, which is what we did. Um, we sent it over to him and said, thank you. Mm -hmm. Because he was that accommodating. Like, that's how rare it is that a manager is that nice and accommodating, especially to somebody you've never worked with and you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my personal interaction with Scooter Braun. I know a bunch of celebrities have come out in his defense today, like Justin Bieber and these guys saying, hey, man, I don't know what your fucking deal is, Taylor, but he's the nicest dude on the planet. And right. here's what it is. I can only I speak like about my own more... interaction with him. And yeah. it was great. He was a great guy. I would like a couple more women to come out uh, to. Um, well, Halsey came out for Taylor yeah, for Taylor saying. So I'm saying I would like a her, couple more women. My guts, the female stars are still susceptible to someone coming along and making you feel powerless out of spite. That's fucking bullshit. It's money. There's, there's nothing that's making you feel powerless other than somebody offered a dollar amount for your catalog that you could have matched and paid for yourself because you're the most, Taylor Swift is the most powerful person besides Beyonce, I would say, in the music industry, right? Mm -hmm. That's probably your onesie twosies. Right. Worldwide. So that's fucking bullshit. And saying that you were bullied because of it. No, you have the bank account. You could have. If, if, if you really thought Scooter Braun was a bully, you could have matched that offer, taken him down, and then told the public about it and told Scooter Braun to go and fuck off. Right. You didn't do but it. But I do think that she knows her fans. She knows her brand, yeah. which is she gets <clears throat> broken up with, she gets fucked over, and she has created this character for herself that Kanye shits on. Yeah. Um, all the boys that she dates just break her heart. She's always like this underdog person. And for a second, she was not, right? Yeah. And so this really works uh, for her towards her fans as far as like, hey, and so the hashtag of like, you know, free Taylor or whatever it is, is like going crazy because yeah. they really want to get behind their their superstar being shit on again 
by someone else again like she fine yeah yeah. just so you guys know and um she will be fine and we'll get i I mean i don't know does she get some kind of royalty from the old songs or anything yeah i I believe so so you get that's what you do that's the idea with that's the whole model of the music industry is that you get in advance, you make the songs, and then you make a royalty from them. Correct. Very rarely do people completely own all of their masters and all of their music. Unless you're like, uh, who's fucking dude that chants or something that like completely Chance takes rapper, control yeah. over everything and puts it out on YouTube, whatever. But if you sign with a you know, a label, Yeah, it's just widely known that that's how it happens. And you just, and pe- this happens all the time to people. This, in this instance, she just didn't like the person that bought her music. But this kind of thing happens all the, all time. the time. And that's the model of it. And that's why, you know, uh, recording artists get pissed off once they make it big because in the beginning they sign away their life just to be on the radio. And then they start getting big enough where they're like, hang on. And they're like, no, man. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. This pissed off his wife to no end that she actually put up an Instagram post, screwed around his wife and just said, if you really want to talk about this, let's talk about all the fake shit you do and just unleashed in this post. Right. And uh, I and to be honest, Scooter Braun's wife isn't that type of person. Like I don't even know. I don't even. Know I've who never it even is. heard her speak out. I against neither until anything, this story. So. To be honest with you, so it's not like some flashy fucking you know, real housewives of, of Beverly Hills or whatever. It's not. Sure. And, um, and again, oh, Swifty. I, I can tell you in the instance that I worked with him, he was amazing and he did not have to be like a guy of that size. There was no way I thought I'd even get a call back. Not, not in a million years, uh, but it, it fit for the exact scene we were doing. And he happened to have the client right. and he went way, way out of his way to take care of us and the production. And I mean, how cool was that fucking dude? You oh, hung out with him. Oh, it was awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, this whole shit with her, like, this is just going to keep going on and on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, the problem with her is, is as much as you want to say down to Taylor Swift, she just drops fucking bangers. Did you hear, like, the last two songs that are off of this new album mm-hmm. are great, and they're fucking hits, and you're just like, Jesus Christ, man. She doesn't lose. Yeah, because she uh, orchestrates it that way. But yeah, 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 for sure. It's still, it's still hard to drop hits. Like I think, and I think Kanye is feeling the pressure of that right now, where you go through all this, the 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 craziness, right? And and everybody hates you, and then they love you, and then you do this shit. And this album now has been pushed. It was supposed to come out Thanksgiving of last year on a Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. You start to think, all right, cool, man. Is there enough hits on this? Because on the last album that came out last summer. When he had those seven songs on there, people were like, ah, it's good. It's an art piece, but there's no bangers on here. Mm. And I think you start to get in your mind of like, shit, man, I've got to drop hits. And all the musicians I've taught, I've, I've spoken with privately always have that same stress level of, man, I've got to drop hits. It's hard. Right. Taylor Swift is able to do it at a record pace of just dropping hits. And it's hard. Like even, you know, who was it? Katy Perry's last album. Like. I don't know any songs off of that. Right. I don't hear them on the radio. Do you yeah. know, like, no. Remember? And that's Katy Perry. Right. I think she's out of hits. You're starting to get into that realm where you're out of hits and you're going to be out of the public eye. And what is she hosting? American Idol or yeah. whatever it is. And then, you know, she's, she's generating, what, $18 million or a year off of that show? Yeah. Because that's 15, kind of the deal, 18, right? Yeah. Is, is, uh, if, you, if you're not doing hits and you're not doing a Vegas residency... You got to get on a show and then you can try to revitalize your shit. Blake Shelton's been able to pay the best of the best. Um, Man, God's Country, that song's amazing. Adam (laughs) Levine's been able to drop hits. Yeah. Which is why he quit. Um, So it's hard. It's it's a hard profession in that that way. But like, dude, if the only way to beat all this negative press over and over and over again for Taylor is just drop hits and she keeps doing it. So... People forget about it if well, this the way next that she album generates is great. press for her songs. Yeah. But you still it's the song still has to be good. It's all hand in hand. She is the puppet and the puppet master, and I will not have <laughs> any more discussion about it. But you know what else is hard to watch? Is Meghan Markle once again living Come my on. life. Yeah. 
going to the London series, going back into the into the locker room, whatever, with the Yankees yeah. hugging them. Yeah. I really enjoy that, by the way. We're going to talk about this on Drinking Bros Sports, but the Yankees Red Sox played over in England over the weekend. Did a London series. How many did they play? Two. Two games. Two yeah. games. Both games were fun as shit to watch. Not your traditional baseball games. One was like 17 to 12. The yeah, they like, like wanted to do a cricket type thing for them. Like, I don't know. It was crazy, man. Uh, but a blast to watch where... The NFL has been doing this for years now. Uh, I would say like the last five or six years, playing two games over in London to try to get Europe into football, right? Okay. The NFL. The teams and the games they put over there have been shitty. And it's like they come on at like nine in the morning and you're like, great. It's the Jaguars versus Carolina. Right. Sweet. And it's like a 13 to three game. No one's amped about it. I'm not even amped about getting up for it. That was what I was worried was going to happen with this, where it's like, all right, sweet, you go over there, and then what is it, a 1-0 game or a 2-1 yeah. game or whatever it is? Yeah. And you're like, oh, how can I get into this? Both games, you're just ripping home runs, and it's, it was fast-paced. It was fun. They lasted forever. Yeah. Uh, and the fans had a blast. Like, I, I was jealous about not being there. That's how great those games were. Right. We had them on in the morning, because they both started at like 11 or noon, it was just awesome to have the, those games on play throughout the so day. So really. early. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Um, that good for Megan. them. But uh, Markle, you Markle, knew she was going to be there. Gosh, if I had just, I just feel like if I had just gotten that part on Suits <laughs> that I auditioned for. You know what I mean? And I just see myself mm -hmm. doing all this stuff. And it is so sad, you know? Yeah. But gosh, good for her. Yeah, yeah. I bet she doesn't know one fucking thing about it. No, nothing, nothing. No. Nope. And, uh, and it ruined your life because that could have been... No, actually the casting director ruined your life. The casting suits. director ruined my life. Um, and so it's hard to see her living my life. Do you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, but good for her. And I'm, look, I'm proud of you for, for being with a plebeian like myself. <laughs> Um, a what? Just a worthless piece of garbage. Uh, trash oh, person. Oh, you know I'm joking. Trash person. No, I respect it. I respect that that could have been your life, you know? Sure. You got suits, and then all of a yeah. sudden, boom. Then boom, I'm just the, You're on the a people's, date. people's princess. Oh, I'm on a date with some guy. I don't know. Who, who is it? Yeah. He Prince Harry? Yeah. We don't know, you lying bitch. Yeah. But it worked. Didn't it? And now you're turning the whole royal world sure. upside down with your bullshit. Did you call yourself the people's princess, by the way? No, that's what she is. So then that's what I would, mm. I'm like saying if I had just gotten that part and then I go on a date with this guy that I don't know who he is because yeah. we don't follow the royals at all, you fucking liar. And then I go on the date. Yep. And then, and then all of a sudden I'm the people's princess. I gotcha. Gotcha. We should get you a crown, maybe some form of scepter. Um, maybe you could be the podcast princess. And you know? I'll just be like, see, Megan? Yeah. I'm good, too. I'm fine. Right? The, the beauty is anybody... I want this life instead. The beauty is anybody watching this show on YouTube, her head is right behind yours on this book. Um, a Hollywood princess. Megan. Look at that. One name, too. They didn't even put her last name on there. Megan. Yeah. When I go Megan, I still go Kelly. Really? Yeah. I have completely forgotten about her. I don't. Uh, completely. I, that's where I go. Like, she's not a one, really? she's not a one name person to me. I guess there's a Meghan couple Markle different isn't a, Megan. Yeah. Yeah. She's not a one name person to me yet. Okay. That was a little, that was a I'm stretch. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Andrew Morton. That was a stretch. He, he, he's the author of that. Just going by Megan. That's a, that's a lot. Right. Like, she's the only one or the best one or anyone that we should even chat about. Huh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, by the way, we're going live off of our YouTube channel. We've combined Ross Patterson Revolution and Drinking Bros podcast on YouTube for, a, or for our own channel. And we're going to be watching the hot dog eating contest, Chestnuts, live with you guys on YouTube. I think if Jamie doesn't fuck it up, right? <laughs> if, if, if our producer doesn't fuck it up we're gonna watch it live. we're not making any promises guys we never have and i'll be at the start of my drinking then at 
We'll probably start around 11 a.m. Drinking? Yeah, yeah, So you'll be good to go by high noon. Ah, be mm. my prime by high noon. Mm, and these times are all Eastern, guys. Tell me something, girl. Singing, we're still singing. Yep. Which is Bradley so Cooper, great. Bradley Cooper, Star is Born, Trashed. Oh, oh God, oh. you're going to pee yourself? Man, I got a, I got a thing and uh, can't really hear so good. I need to get to Uber Eats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get some McDonald's Uber Eats. Here's 30. Ooh, give you're me, rich. Give me a double chi. Just give me a double chi, baby. I got a... Uh, double gotta, cheese. Yeah. I start talking to the, the Uber driver. Hey, uh, look. Baby. Keep I'll calling him it, baby. I'll throw in another uh, 30 if you can give me some bikes. I got a bursitis in my... I got a thing in my ear. Is it bursitis? Is it bursitis or is nah, it? I don't uh, think that's a thing. I got a I got gunderitis here. I get, oh, mm. my biceps are too big. Can you get me a tell me something, girl? Like just Gosh. keep going in and out of mm -hmm. song to dance to. Uh, I need that McDonald's. By the end of the night, I'm eating it off the floor like Hasselhoff, just burger style. Mm. Oh. Yeah, who can forget? Who could forget? Who wants to forget? No one. Hashtag never forget. <laughs> never forget. Half never forget. Burger on the ground. But I'm looking forward to it. Fourth of July again is is one of my faves. Yeah, one of my favorite holidays. Yeah, of course. I enjoy the shit out of it. So. Drinking. Yeah. Fun. Fireworks. Also, I feel like once, once you get past the fourth, it puts us a little closer to football season where it's just like, sure. ah, we're almost there. Almost sliding into Augie, you know? Mm -hmm. Right into Aug Dog. Okay. Uh, now let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Jabes. I don't know if, if I've given this out before. I feel like I have, but if not, I'm going to. And, and look, I should every year because we were recording this Yeah, I this feel on, like we have, but do every time every, it's due. Every yeah. time it's due because it's still so shocking every July 1st <laughs> that uh, Bobby Bonilla mm -hmm. of, of famously of the New York Mets, um, it, was, it was a really shitty deal. I mean, the Mets have been shitty for years and years and years. Right. Um, since the 80s. They have not won anything since the 80s, I believe. Yeah, and um, I don't think we're offending anyone. No, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think there's one person that would be like, what? No, not at right? all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> there was, there's like zero Mets fans left anymore. G there can't be. There can't be any. To pay off a $5.8 million debt, uh, they said that they would pay it out over the course of like 35 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if he... Decided to do this deal. I don't know who made this deal. Every July 1st, he gets 1.193248.20. So that's $1.19 million a year every July 1st until the year 2035. <laughs> he hasn't played baseball. All those numbers are, yeah. In years. Right. The Mets have two... Players who've made the all-star team this year okay. for, for uh, next week's all-star game. They make less money than, than Bobby Bonilla oh, makes so good. currently that's per so year good. for the Mets. And this just keeps going on over and over again. Uh, that, so this $5.9 million debt that they owed him will end up being $30 million by the end of this, these payouts. <sighs> Whoever his business manager is, that guy needs to be lauded and yeah. showered with pra praise. Yes. Um, so he's on payment nine of this one point one nine oh, million. Oh Lord! He will receive sixteen more payments through July first, twenty thirty five. Wow! <laughs> Isn't that great. That is That's the way to do it. By I the know. way. Because even if you're a dirt bag, right? Let's because Bobby Bunny made a lot of money during his career, probably hundred million dollars. Okay, maybe one fifty, right? Let's say you're a dirt bag, you blow all your money and sure. you know, hookers, drogas, whatever it may be, and you Ice blow cream, through yeah. it, then you have this every July first. Boom! And that hits like, your direct and you're deposit. You're like, well, at least I have that. Yeah, at least I have that, and I can get wet off of that. You know? Sure, sure. It's great. It's fucking great. Good for him. So it's Bobby Bonilla Day. Uh, every year it trends on uh, Twitter, and every year I laugh. It gives me the best chuckle ever. That this this dude is. I would wager he's probably got to be three hundred pounds now. 
Um, it's just sitting there on his couch. What do you think? Yeah, collecting I mean, this money. You never know. And it's it's uh, it's the greatest thing of all time. That's why the Mets will always be terrible, and the Knicks now looks like they will be terrible for the next ten years as well, because they lost out on everyone in free agency last night. So. Uh, sad time to be a New Yorker unless you're a Yankees fan. Then, Ew. hey, hey, uh, Yankees are on fire, man. They look great. So maybe the Yankees can can help rate this ship. But uh, the Mets and the Knicks, eh, not so much. Not so much. Looking forward to the fourth with you, Jabes. It'll be fun. Well, you're also my uh, designated driver and my babysitter. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, well. I won't be partying as much, well, but I'll be here. And you'll be watching me party. Right. Which is always most important. Just as fun. Because sure. on July 4th, I feel like I've, uh, I'm, I've provided a lot of freedom for this country, too. Mm-hmm. So, a little something about me. Let's get to know a little something about you too late. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Woo. Bye.